Potentially one of the most dangerous situations when shooting hand-loaded or reloaded ammunition is the possibility of a squib round. A squib simply means that the bullet, which is supposed to go down the barrel of the gun and reach towards the target, has gotten lodged in the middle of the barrel. This typically happens when a reloader forgets to charge powder to a case, or maybe charges some but not enough, and the primer provides enough energy to send the bullet down into the barrel and get it started, but not enough to send it the whole way out. Now this is an inconvenience, to be sure. The worst part though is when the shooter does not realize that's what's happened, loads another round and fires it, with that bullet still plugging the barrel, you essentially have a little bomb that you're holding in your hand. It's bad with a pistol cartridge, with a rifle cartridge it's even worse just because there's more energy there. Now this is not the case right now. This barrel is clear, you can see the whole way through there. But I've had this situation come up in the past when I was trying to develop a really light recoiling load and I knew I was on the bottom end of the safe zone but apparently I found the limit. And thankfully I was expecting it, I was prepared for it, I didn't pull the trigger again. Um, but I had a stuck bear, or a stuck bullet in the barrel and I was not prepared to deal with that. So today we're going to make a tool uh, that will help us clear that if that should ever happen again. I don't expect it to happen, I don't want it to happen, but if it does, I want to have the right tool. So clearing that stuck bullet, that squib round, is pretty simple. We just need a punch to punch that bullet out through the barrel the rest of the way. However, the steel of this barrel, while it's tough, it is subject to scratching and the rifling in there is very precise and we don't want to take any risk of marring that up. So we don't want to use a steel punch. Instead, I want to use a brass punch. And I want a brass punch that fits as reasonably well to that bore as I can. So this is a 380 caliber um, a pistol barrel, and so I found that a 5 16 rod will work perfectly for this. That'll suit a 380, 9mm, uh, as well as 38 Special and 357 Magnum. It all is a, is a decent fit to each of those barrels. So I have a, a mark here at the end of this brass rod, and I'm going to clamp it in my vise. Now when you're clamping it in your vise, you want to make sure and use uh, a protector. I made up some soft jaws here for my vise out of some Kydex. I'll link a video here uh, showing how I did that. And I've made a mark here uh, a little bit longer than the barrel, that way I've got uh, some control uh, over that over that punch even with it in the barrel. And I'm just going to clamp that in my vise and I'm just going to use a, a hacksaw here. Just very carefully just get that started. Just go ahead and cut that off. Now you can see here we have some burrs we want to clean up a little bit. So I'm going to take this one out and clamp this in my vise and just use a file to clean up some of those burrs and kind of chamfer the end. Just take my file here and start by getting the burrs off the end. If you've ever used a brass punch or looking at a brass hammer that's been used well over the years, you'll see that it's kind of a, a mushroom head on it, so to speak. It just kind of mu mushrooms out. If I were to take a steel hammer and beat on this enough, it would, it would mushroom out over time. And I don't want that happening in the barrel. So I'm going to take in and put a little chamfer on this. Is that the best way to do that? about 45 degree angle. If I had a lathe, I might just chuck it in there and turn it, but I don't have a lathe, so a file will do. Take that out and see what I have to work with. Now you can see that it's nice and smooth because of those soft jaws that protected nicely. I'd really like to get a better chamfer on that than what I have. So I'm going to risk marring it up. I can always straighten out the marring if I, if I do mangle it up a little bit. And this will be the end going in the barrel. So the other end is not quite as critical. Alright, so I'm going to make sure I have my soft jaws in here. Clamp my file in there. Give this a shot. There we go, 
that's looking a little better. Now I can just take my sandpaper. Feeling pretty good. I've got some what is this, two something, no, 320 grit. Take some 320 grit and smooth that out. It's nice and smooth. I'm gonna grab a rag, make sure that's now let's see what damage our jaws did. Huh, surprisingly none. I would have guessed there'd be some damage there, but there's not. Now a trick when you're using a file like that, especially with some soft brass, I can really clog it up. So you want to take a wire brush and kind of clean out your file. You can buy file cards are the name of them. They're made just for cleaning out files. You can see all that brass trapped in there. I'm just gonna take that and just, just brush that free. I'm gonna go and do the other side. I didn't use it today, but it's a good thing to do with your files every so often. Now you can see all that brass is cleaned out of there. Uh, it's ready to go. So, so say we have our squib round stuck in our barrel. What do we do? So with a revolver, we only have really one option and that's to pound it back where it came from. Thankfully with an auto loader, we have the option of taking the barrel out and then we can decide which way we want to go with it. So if it's towards, uh, if it's still pretty far towards the back of the barrel, I would just uh, set this maybe on a, on a block of soft wood here, um, the, the back end of the, the breech there and just tap that out, uh, use a hammer, just tap that back out. If it's towards the other end and it's going to be a shorter distance to just finish taking it the whole way out, um, then I would I would go that way. Something to keep in mind though, uh, you don't want to just set this on the bench, drop the punch and start pounding because it would not take uh, much force at all to bend and deform the, the muzzle there, uh, which we don't want to do. So in that case, I would take my calipers and measure the outside diameter there and that's comes in at about 7 16 So I drill a 7 16 inch hole through my scrap block of wood here, which then I could I could drop this uh, down into that hole and it's supported then by the breech. Make sure this is hanging out over the end of your bench and then you can, uh, you can take and tap that the rest of the way out. So hopefully this has been helpful. And even more so, hopefully you never have to do it. I should add a disclaimer that I'm not a gunsmith. I've never been trained by a gunsmith. This is just what I would do if I found myself in this situation with my own personal firearm. Know your limits. If you're not comfortable taking on a job like this and willing to accept the risks that come with it, just take your firearm to a trained gunsmith and know that it's taken care of well. Check out the playlist at the end where I talk about some other gun related topics. If you enjoy in general learning how stuff works, how to fix it when it doesn't, hit subscribe, tap that bell. We'll see you guys back for the next video.